Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, before we start, can we rise up to our feet, please? Let's rise up to our feet. Let's close our eyes and let's just worship God. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch to my heart. Of ages, we thank you. Eternal Rock of Ages, we bless your holy name. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for such a time as this. Father, we ask you to come and dwell in our midst today. Holy Spirit of the living God, come and teach us, O oh God. Let the words of our hearts, mouths, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight today. In the precious name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's sit down. Uh, my name is Larry Kolabanjo, as um, the moderator just um, said. And first and foremost, I'm a child of God. Second, I was born and raised in the Anglican Communion. Third, I was a member of the Parish Youth Council for many years. So, I gave you a resume so that you can understand that I am actually part of you. I was a youth in this communion and um, youth fellowships, concerts, and all the things change. And I'm happy that um, we still have youths in BAM, in, I said BAM Church, sorry, in the Anglican, in the Anglican Church. Um, yeah, I just said I'm a banker. Yes, I'm a banker. Uh, but first of all, I'm also a Nigerian. So I'm going to speak to you from different perspectives. I don't normally um, follow any pattern. But the title for um, today's... Um, uh, um, seminar or speech is investments and career opportunities in the post pandemic era. So the first thing that you need to ask yourself, there's a buzz, the post pandemic era. So what do we understand by the post pandemic era? My sister, what do you understand? Post pandemic. After the pandemic. Sorry? After the pandemic. So what do you understand by the pandemic? Ah, sorry, so we want to talk about investments in the post pandemic era. All right, so you're talking about post means that something that has happened what? After. Am I correct? Okay, so what is the pandemic? What pandemic? We're all going to talk, so it's not just going to be. The pandemic is, uh, I would say, a disease that affects all. According to the definition of the Well, I, I, wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't, I would agree with you, but we need to be specific. Let me tell you something. Um, Whenever um, a priest, a reverend, a bishops, whenever they put something like this together, believe me, it's a very serious matter. And uh, just some few years back, uh, just like flash of lightning, I was also seated where you are sitting as a youth. Okay? And in the flash of an eye, Almost 15, 20 years have passed. So what you decide to do within those, 50, within those years determines where you are going to go to. Determines how far you are going to reach. So it is important that you understand what is going on around you. Now the reason why I ask that question is because I want to know if you understand 
the thing that has been placed before you. Because the pandemic is very, very, very simple. We are all locked down for how many months? Almost, for those of us that were locked down, I was not locked down because I, I belong to the essential services. All right, but we are locked down for many months. Why were we locked down? Because of what? Please, can you say, because of what? Because of what? Because of COVID-19. And COVID-19 has created a change in the world. It has changed the way we do things. It has changed the way we live, actually. We are all coming into this place now, and every one of us, we are wearing what? We are all wearing masks. Were we wearing masks three years ago? Or if you want to enter the bus or you want to enter a fast food restaurant, were you wearing masks? No. So something has changed. Something has happened that has changed the way the world behaves. Something has happened that has changed the way you and I behave. So the pandemic is as a result of the novel coronavirus that has affected a lot of people. Many people have died, so they changed the way, unprecedented all over the world. We thank God for Nigeria because we don't have the set of numbers that they have outside the country. It has changed the way we do things. So what are we saying? How, what aspect of the world has it changed? And how does it affect you and I? And I'll give you a rundown very, very simply. It's, we're talking about career opportunities. So let me have a quick glance over the room. How many of us are in secondary school? Can you raise up your hands? Okay. How many of us are in university? How many of us have finished university? Okay, so we have. To, all right, good. So that means that we will take it in different parts. And I'll start first of all by saying that I will use myself as an example. I entered um, university at the age of 18 years old. I entered at 18 years old. I finished at the age of 23 and I started working at the age of 24. I'm in my mid-40s now. And um, the world when I was living is different from the world when you are living right now. So when we were entering school, there was something our parents used to tell us. It's either they tell you they want you to become a medical doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, or a pharmacist. So every one of us, when we are writing jam, when we are filling our jam form, first choice was usually medicine, pharmacy, or law, or engineering. Why? Because that was, that was what was booming in those days. Or basically, let me just say, that was what was prestigious. So when you finish and you are coming to church with your parents, they would tell their friend, ah, this is my son. He just finished medicine. He's a lawyer. He just, was just called to the bar. So those things were very, very nice, and we all went into those things. I was not fortunate to enter into medicine. Well, maybe I wasn't smart or brilliant enough, but I ended up reading marine biology. Yeah, and when I started studying that course, I, I knew within me that I was just in school, and I was not in school. Because... It basically had no relevance to who I was. Do you understand me? It basically had no relevance to who I was. But I observed something. I saw I was very good with numbers. Very, very good with numbers. So, you're not good with numbers. Right? <laughs> right? So, I knew that there was something I was meant to do. So, in my third year, when I was in university, and I knew... I'd searched through myself, gallivanted around, and then I said, okay, what is it that I need to do now that will get me closer to where I am going to? So I decided to sit for ICANN. So I started with the ATS. I'm not sure how many of you know it. Accountants, see technicians came. And I started doing it. And by the time I finished school, and the time I graduated from school, I was already a chartered accountant. I'm just trying to tell you life. So you need to put all those things into perspective. 
Who are you today? What are you doing today? And from where do you start today? I'll give you another example. If what do you want to let me just cover what would you like to become? Yeah. A conservationist. A conservationist. What about you? A business person. A business person. Please be listening. What about you? You want to be a lawyer. What about you? A fashion designer. Everything that they have said is all fantastic. But let me ask you a question. Are all lawyers successful? Are all business people successful? Are all lawyers successful? In fact, that one is even terrible if you go to Ikeja High Court. <laughs> Not all fashion designers are successful. So in choosing a career, before you talk about the opportunity, you talk about the career. In choosing a career, you need to first of all start from your heart and from the gifts that God has given to you as a person. And I'll zone down. Let's open to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1. Now, this is the story of Daniel. I'm sure in Sunday school or youth church, you guys would have spoken a lot about it. And you guys know the story of Daniel. Let us start from 19. Or let's say 18. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. Verse 20. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. We all know the story of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? And the Bible says that they stood before the king. The king was meant to be an unbeliever, an idol worshiper, or thereabout. And in the midst of all the young boys that were slaves, that were captured, the Bible says that they were found to be ten times better in matters of wisdom and in matters of understanding. What am I talking about? I'm talking about exceptionalism. I'm talking about what? Exceptionalism. So you see, when you decide that you want to do something, I'm not going to tell you what you should do because what you should do is what, I can't tell you what you need to do. I can, I can only tell you that you need to do what you are cut out to do. You need to do what you are built to do. There is no way you can take, um, if you want to fish, eh, can you use a spade to fish or a shovel? What do you use? You use a fishing hook. Two different functions. So, she wants to be a lawyer. She wants to be something else. They can't swap because that's what they are called to do. But the question is, how are you going to end up? When we started this race as young, young lads, believe me, and take this very seriously, we, we were, there were lots of us. But I'm not making fun of them, but not everybody made it. I'm not talking of death. I'm talking about life. Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth. So, we are heaven bound, isn't it? We are born again, isn't it? Are those things is going to get us to heaven? But God also says that he wants us to live on what? On the earth. Which is the reason why he said that I have given you everything that pertains to what? To life and godliness. I'm talking about exceptionalism over here. And that is what we lack. That is what we lack. You want to be a lawyer, what sort of lawyer do you want to be? You want to be an exceptional lawyer. So it's not a case of you're just dreaming about it. The time when lots of your mates are spending, surfing the net, Instagramming, Facebooking, WhatsApping, Snapchatting, and doing all those things, you are not doing that. 
The pandemic has come, and what did it do? It created a digital environment for us, didn't it? So today, if you uh, uh, we've seen a rise in uh, 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 digital technology, Abby. So today, if you want to order for things, you don't need to leave your house. You can order for it from your phone. There is Glovo, there is Uber Eats, right? There is um, uh, which which one is? Is there, there, I mean, there are lots of things over there. With your phone today, you can do a star so so and so and so and transfer money to someone. You can, isn't it? All those things are happening. And you know what has happened? And I'll use the banking industry as an example. 2020, when the pandemic happened, the banking industry was one of the industries that was most hit. Now, a lot of people had jobs all over the world in the banking industry. But I can tell you today that not so many of them have those jobs today. Do you know the reason why? And I'll tell you from the perspective of an employer. After the pandemic, we stopped recruiting certificates. So after the pandemic, because of the way that the pandemic has fashioned us to behave and to live, we stopped recruiting certificates. We stopped recruiting degrees. Oh, it is nice for you to have your degree. Don't get me wrong. But, I'm, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that having a degree today is not what? It's not enough. In fact, when you finish your degree, you have just what? You have just started. What I'm telling you today, my brothers and my sisters, is not something you will start realizing when you finish university. It's something that you have to start realizing from when you are at the minimum secondary school. The mistake that many of us in my own generation made was that we waited till when we got a job to start thinking about what kind of life we want to live. It's too late. It's too late. I'm still going to come back to what I say because I'm sure that that actually struck a chord. Because what you have been told in school is that you should read uh, pass your jam, get into the university, come out with like a two one or a first or a first class, and you'll be successful. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's a myth. Now, you understand what I mean by a myth? That's a fairy tale. It's good because you have it on your CV. But I'm telling you from the perspective of someone in the market that that is not what we are looking for again. What the pandemic has done is that it has created an environment for people to develop skills. So there is a difference between having a degree and having a what? A skill. So when you look at the world today, for doctors, sometime in 2020, during the pandemic, um, one of my brothers in, from BAM Church also, we were in the youth council together. Medical doctor, he finished from school, medical doctor. But for a long time, for over 10, 15 years, I mean, he was practicing medicine, but really he wasn't getting the benefits of what he, he studied. He was one of those that was couriered out to the UK during the pandemic to start a new life as a medical doctor. And that's another story for another day. What am I trying to say? What are they looking for? Today, right now, if you are conversant with the news, the United Kingdom that we call, you all call London, London, London. What profession are they looking for now? Who knows? Sorry? Nurses, no. Yes, sir. Truck drivers. So people are leaving this country. They are going to the airport free of charge. The United Kingdom is lifting them. What am I trying to tell you? We are not looking for certificates and degrees anymore. Hey, wait, calm down. Let me tell you what I'm saying. I don't prepare for messages like this because it's clear. It's, meant to, it's a real life talk. So it's not 
um, those um, you must do seven seven um, seven steps to um, becoming effective. Eight steps to become something. Ten steps to work. All those things are. I'm, I'm sorry for those motivational speakers that say it. I, I don't read it. Real life. When I was asked why I came, when I started banking, my um, former MD of blessed memory uh, asked us a question in the training school. And asked us, and he talked to me, said, what did you come to do here in the bank? And I just answered, and I said, I, I came to make money. Everybody else was saying, uh, I came to build a career. Oh, God, uh, I was jumping buses up and down. Uh, I, I strolled all the way from uh, all this real area you're looking at, all these corners. Uh, we use our feet to create maps on this road. So I won't come somewhere and tell you that I came to create a car. I came to look for money. But that's on a lighter note. It's important for you to understand from where you are today that you should be able to project into the future from when you are in secondary school. So I'm not even talking to university. University students, it's almost getting late. For those of you that have left university, it's almost getting late. It's a late time to start. You want to choose a career in this post-pandemic era, then you need to have foresight. For you to have foresight, then that means that you need to read. That means that you need to be abreast of what is happening. They cannot be talking about the oil prices in Nigeria. They cannot be talking about the financial industry in Nigeria. They cannot be talking about the agricultural sector in Nigeria. And then they cannot be talking about pandemic and nobody knows what the pandemic actually is. You cannot. Because there will be no base for you to start from. I'll tell you something. I was watching YouTube. I'm, I'm an ardent um, viewer of um, YouTube, but I try to use it to educate myself in history and other, other things. I discovered something. I was watching the Chinese and how they prepare for Olympics in gymnastics and swimming and those things. Do you know how they prepare? They prepare children from the age of three. And you see them stretching the legs, and the children are crying. And they are not looking. From three, four years old, they are back flipping, they are doing things anyhow. From three, four years old, they are dipping them into the swimming pool. They are already doing this. By the time that child is 15 years old, what do you think that child will be? So where do you start from? Where do you as a person, as an individual, where do you start from? You go home today. Think. That's all I can tell you. Think. Because you can waste your time with the, all the, um, uh, 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 what, what, what do you guys call it? All the hype that is happening now. Guess what? It's not going to last. It's not going to last. What is going to last is you. You talk about career and investment in the post-pandemic era. Ladies and gentlemen, the career that you have is you. The investment that you're going to make is not in uh, um, savings account, current account, in trade. No, no, no. The investment you're going to make is where? In you. So you have an opportunity to spend 30 minutes on the internet. What do you use those 30 minutes to do? What sort of information do you get? What sort of skill do you learn? On a lighter note, you know, I was in my house one day and I, was, I felt like eating um, a goosey soup. And I don't know how to cook. But guess what? You can come and try me now. I learned how to cook via what? YouTube. I learned it via YouTube. You, you will not believe the access that your generation has to information. The access that your generation has to a lot of materials. My generation did not have it. I didn't see a computer until I finished university. Oh, you're opening your mouth. The access that you have to information is impeccable. 
And it usually bothers me whenever I see young ones in Nigeria now, and I'm like, I'm asking them questions. And I was watching one. They asked, what is, um, at the NYSC camp, you know these funny things that you watch? Someone sent it. And they asked that, what is the meaning of NYSC? And the person doing NYSC does not know. They asked one, what is the meaning? What, what did you study? I studied computer science. So what do you have? I have a degree. What degree? BSc. What is BSc? He could not tell the, what BSc is. So what did you do for four years? A total waste of time. Hello? Hello? There are many careers that are popping up after the pandemic. But you will never get there if you don't invest in yourself. You will never get there if you don't invest in yourself. I was somewhere some few weeks ago and I met um, a group of seven to nine, seven to ten year old boys sitting down and what were they doing? They were coding. They were creating apps. What are you doing? What do you spend your time doing? If I should pinpoint you to something that you need to do, and I'm going to tell you this, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a medical doctor, you want to be an accountant, all those things will not work. A lot of people have lost their jobs today because we do not need you anymore. So if at this point in time you are a lawyer and you do not have the skill to disrupt technology, do you, understand me? you are not relevant. If you are a medical doctor today and you cannot use artificial intelligence all right, in the medical field, you are irrelevant. During the pandemic, 2020, a group of young um, students in America right, got together and they created an artificial intelligence that what? That could use robotics to perform an operation. How many of you know, know Microsoft Excel? So do you know how to use it? So if you want to add 20 plus 30 plus 40 plus 50 plus 60 plus 80 plus 90 plus 100 plus 1,000, all you do is you key it in and you click on some on the um, sum, right? And it gives you the total. Who is using um, calculator again? It's re irrelevant. Calculator is irrelevant. I'm just trying to do a comparison so that you can understand. Before, when I was young and we travel or we go for parties, our fathers would carry Kodak camera. Abi, and they'll be putting it. And then they will do it, they would do like this. And then they'll show you the picture, isn't it? Then they went to the flash, it went to everything. At the end of the day, what is here? Hmm? What is here? A phone. Don't say iPhone, just say phone. Eh? It's a phone. Can this phone take pictures or not? Do you know what this phone can do? You know that there's nothing that a computer can do today that this phone cannot, cannot do. So what am I trying to say? It is very, very easy for whatsoever you are doing now to become quickly irrelevant. So if you are choosing a career today, no matter what career that you choose today, if you are not backing it up with digital skills, uh, you will be obsolete. You will not only be obsolete, you will not be attractive. You will not only be attractive to job uh, employers, you will not even be attractive even if you are a businesswoman. Because today, there are people that are selling on Instagram, they are selling on Facebook, they are selling on YouTube, they are creating content on YouTube to sell their products. If you just carry your own and go to your show and sit down there, I think that people will come there. Uh, all right, you, I mean, you never make any sales. 
Now, someone will ask me and say that, hey, um, uh, but these things cost money, isn't it? Uh, I don't have access to money. That is the first thing that, that's, that's the first mistake that you will ever make. Because like I told you, all these things are free now. If you research properly, all right, I, I learned about blockchain technology, and I use blockchain technology today, all right, to, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, you all know I, I'm in the Forex um, business, to drive my foreign exchange uh, business. I learned it free of charge. There's a site called Cost Error, where you can learn it. But if you, you see, I'm just telling you, I'm telling you because I searched for it, but I found cost error. There's, there's a site called LinkedIn. How many of us know LinkedIn? How many of, eh, for those of us that have left university, how many of you are on LinkedIn? So how do you want to showcase yourself? Do you think we'll come to your house to look for you? Or you think that we put vacancies inside the newspaper again? The newspaper is obsolete. I don't need newspaper again. Everything is on my, on my phone. There are free courses online for you to study. If you go to LinkedIn, there are free courses on every area of life. My younger brother works in a multinational firm in the United Kingdom. And uh, he was telling me before he left, he said, Larry, do you know that I got this job on LinkedIn? He showcased himself on LinkedIn. Everything he had done, put videos there, of him speaking and showcased himself properly. Why? Because he has the skill to do it. Because you can't just jump in there and do it if you don't have the skill. Do we understand? So it is important for you to strip yourself of what you know today and start rebuilding. Start rebuilding. You want to study accountancy, right? very, very good. You'll be a chartered accountant by the grace of God. But you need to know how to use technology to drive your occupation, to drive your business. If you don't use technology to drive it, then you have no place in the post-pandemic era. You're talking about investments. I talk about investment is about you. Many people thought probably when you are writing this, I'll come and teach you how to where to put your money. If you don't have a career, how can you have money to invest? If your career is not um, thriving, how can you have money to invest? If I start telling you the things to invest here, I've seen your demography over here. You can, you don't need it. It's good for you to start reading about investments. Do you understand me? It's good. But I'm trying to tell you now where you need to start from is to build yourself. And I'm saying this because we say Generation Z. I don't know which one you're going to, the next generation will call themselves. Since the alphabet ends at Z, maybe they will go back to A. But in this particular generation where you are today, there is a more likelihood for lots of this generation to fail than succeed. Why? Because you take a lot of things for granted. With a lot of things for granted. The access that you have, it is taken for granted. I'll give you another example. In the time of the pandemic also, there was a young boy, if you read the news um, properly, that um, landed in a country called Finland. You all know the country Finland, right? He landed in Finland, and then he posted something on, I think, Instagram or Twitter, and um, he said that he had just been taken from Nigeria by a particular company to become, what's the place about? Probably 20 something years old, to be a drone pilot. How many of you know what drones are? Drones, those things that you see flying up there. And he said that he had worked and worked and worked on himself, building with paper, with kites, with everything, drones, and he has been trying to get many organizations in Nigeria to what? to fund him, to employ him, or to, you know, be part of his project, but he did not get it. But he showcased what he had to do online with the raw materials and local materials that we have here in Nigeria. He was taken from Nigeria during that particular and taken to Finland. Uh, his story has changed. 
Your story can change also. If you start today. If you start today. You cannot just open your books when you go to school. Read because you want to pass an exam again. Because passing an exam doesn't ensure you a future. The decisions that you make will determine where you are going to. Do we understand? The decisions that you make will tell you where you are going to. So there are some decisions that will make you and there are some decisions that will break you. There are some actions that you will do that will make you and there are some actions that will do that, that you will do that will break you. Even if you want to be a musician, do you know it's hard work? Or you think all those guys that you see um, on stage that are singing, you think that they just popped up one day and started singing. Do you know what it is to learn how to play a drum or to play a keyboard or a guitar? I, I, I played the guitar, but I know when I was learning how to play the guitar, my finger caught blood. Life does not come easy. It's not a chance game. It's a change game. It's not by chance, it's by changing. Do we understand? So, I've, I use myself always because I lived, initially, I lived a very, 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 when I say very, very, you don't want to know how very um, bad I lived my life. I would not care about anything. I was just gallivanting all around the whole place. But I thank God that I was able to make a change, a turn at some point in time in my life by making the right decision and I've not stopped reading I told you I'm not the person people talk about their age my age is um, my age I'm in my mid 40s and I can tell you today that I am still reading I'm still studying today I'm, re I'm um, Google um, Academy I'm a member of the Google Academy. I'm learning business analytics on it. I'm studying for my master's in Greek business in Rome Business School, as it is today. I'm preparing for my PhD. I'll continue, I will continue, I'll continue digging. You can never find anything on the surface. For you to find an opportunity in your career, it's not about what they tell you, it's about what you discover. Apologies to us of the Christian faith. But I'll tell you something today. And let me use the first example. I saw it online so a few days ago. How many of us know the country called Germany? We all know Germany. Now in history, what, is, what was Germany known for? Who knows? Eh? No, please, let's, let's talk. So we know. Eh? Okay, is it? They cost World War I and II. But there was something very, very specific that they did that was very bad, that created, that, I mean, that created a stir around the world. They were killing Jews in concentration camps. Reverend, we, sir, please, we need to study more of history. Uh, they need to, you can only learn when you know these things and that you know how to change history. All right? Gem Germany killed a lot of Jews. Jews are meant to be, from the Bible, the children of God, right? And then the whole world, there was an outcry. And then Britain came, America came, everybody, they won Germany. I mean, they sentenced some people to death and all of that. They created a great crime against God and humanity. Isn't it? Today, where will you put Germany? A first world country or a third world country? It's a first world country. In the European community, Germany is the number one. Everybody's going there. Industrialization is there. Your Mercedes Benz is from there. It's manufactured over there. Abby? Okay, so though, though they, they, they sin against God. How come ancestral course is not following them? How come in terms of digital technology, industrialization, how come their children are growing into, to, to become the best in class. Why? Please forgive me. 
I love praying. I understand the Bible. But I know that God has given us everything that pertains to life and glory. It will not come and, not those prayers, you pray to pass your exam, you will fail. You pray to succeed, you will fail. I'm not, I'm not cursing. When Moses got to the Red Sea, he shouted unto God that God should help him. God did not come down. He has finished his work on the seventh day. He will not come and toil again. He finished his work and he told him, what do you have in what? Your hands. Nobody's going to make it work for you. It's you. Your career is going to work for you. There's going to be an opportunity in your career when you decide to do it. And I was using this as an example. And I, 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 I hold on to this. This is my second example. Uh, one of my friends in the Pentecostal churches, um, you know, and you pray and all of all those things, I shout. Uh, and uh, the, we're talking about um, idol worshipping, Hindu, Buddhist, uh, fetish things and all of that. And I looked at him and I smiled. And I said, do you know the thing that we lack in the church of Christ and the church of God? We lack excellence. We lack building people. We, 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 we have not yet built people that will create an impact in our environment. Let me tell you the truth. He was carrying an iPad. And I asked him, that you have an iPad with you. He has a Samsung. And you got on the pulpit. And you said, open to the book of da 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 isn't it? You know that you read the Bible. The, the people don't carry this anymore. If you say open to the book of something now, everybody will go to their Bible app. I'm going to ask you a question. Who created this phone? Sorry? Man. Okay. Which I said you need to study, you need to read wide. The technology behind the mobile phone today is from which part of the world? Sorry? Sorry? The technology behind the phone, the mobile phone, is from where? Eh? It's from Asia. The Japans, Japanese people, the Chinese, the Koreans. Everything is a modification of what they have done. Let me ask a question. In your study of Asians, what is the dominant religion in Asia? Buddhism. So I asked my friend that is a pastor, I said, you are using something that was created by a Buddhist inside church. I hope you know where I'm going to. Where is the place of excellence in the house of God? Why can't it be you? The theory of mathematics started in Africa. The pulley system, if you understand pulley, if you understand engineering, the pulley system, what creates things that you pull, was Africa. How come it's not you? We build, eh, I tell you, you build gigantic sculptures all around the place to say you want to worship God. And what comes out of it? Dry Christians, wet Christians. Dry Christians, wet Christians. That is why I read the first passage I read to you, Daniel chapter 1. He said that, and they found them to be what? Ten times better. When they were going to find excellence for science, for astrology, for medicine, where did they find it? In the house of God, in the children of God. How do you get there? You can never get there from the surface. You get there from the deep. They're going to slave. They're going to, they're going to read they're going to open books. They're going to change your paradigm towards social media. I'm, I'm going home right now. They're going to change your paradigm towards social media. Now, you're going to see social media as what? As a platform for you to go deeper. Not as a platform for you to gossip about Linda Ikeji. Or to know what is happening to Two-Face. When some, some children at the age of 16, 17 are already creating engines for cars. The, 
post-pandemic era, it's not going to have a place for mediocrity. I just want to get a job so that I can collect 100,000, 200,000 naira per month. It's not going to happen. There's no space for it anymore. What people are looking for today, what the world is looking for today, are world changers. People that can change the narrative of what we have currently today. And like I said, for those of you in secondary school, it is, you, you, it is not, don't, I mean, yeah, this is the time to start. That is why as a parent, that's what I do. I start exposing my child to things that will enter into his subconscious. And it's not money. It's you. It's not money. It's you. I'm going to end my um, discussion with you today on one last on one last note. There's something that my generation did not do, and I blame my generation for basically what is happening right now in Nigeria. It's the ability for my fine young man over here and my nice lady and sister over here not being able to what? To collaborate. The next season of the world is not going to create jobs. They're going to have jobs, but we're going to have more people that are what? Are freelance, freelancers. And for freelancers to work, you guys need to what? Collaborate. I have a group of young um, boys and girls between the ages of 23 and 29 that I particularly mentor today. And um, they had problems to getting a job. You know, it's hard to get jobs. Like I told you, if you don't have the skills, you can't get the job. So they went to develop their skills, and they came back, and they said that we still do not have jobs. They said, okay, come together. As someone, I mean, I invested in them, but I also told them that you, each and every one of you, will bring a particular, and I told them, but you need to work together. Today, they are in Yaba, and I know what they are creating. Because they pulled together their little, little, little funds after they finished school, all right, and they're creating something great. I'm watching out for them. Life will throw you oranges. What do you make out of it? You can decide to squeeze it and drink it, or you can decide to make lemonades and sell it. Do you understand me? You want to invest properly. You want to have money to invest. You want to be able to invest, invest in yourself. Before I start, you know, when Jesus Christ spoke to, uh, uh, I can't remember where that actually is, but he said that we do not cast the pearl onto what? Onto swine. That we don't give the things of the children of God just to, any, just to anybody. You want to learn how to invest. This is not the forum. The first investment that you need to learn is what? In yourself. I keep saying it. It's like, eh, but I know what I'm talking about. If you don't go back home today and have a, a rethink about the kind of things that you use your time to do, all right, you will get there and you will see that you wasted a lot of time back there. Let's collaborate. Let's keep thinking. Let's keep digging deep. And I'm sure that the future holds a very great opportunity for us. Thank you very much.